Okay, so today we're working on a 2004 Ford Freestar, and uh, it's owned by a mail delivery person, and yesterday he came to the shop saying that uh, it had gotten near the red zone in the on the temperature gauge. I quickly looked at it briefly yesterday, and the cooling fans weren't running, although I felt the engine was hot enough they should have been commanded on. Uh, I went into the Ford software in the snap-on scan tool and functional tests and there is no command for the cooling fans. Uh, I tried this the Autel scanner as well. It had the function but when I selected it it said the vehicle did not support it and it aborted. So we're gonna have to use conventional diagnostics on this. Um, everything looks like it's plugged in Here's the electrical circuit. There are two cooling fans, two cooling fan relays, actually three relays according to this diagram. Relay one, relay two, relay three, um, controlled by the PCM. And this only shows a cooling fan motor one. I don't know why that is. Oh, there's cooling fan motor two. Okay, so we're gonna start out by checking these fuses in the bust electrical center and we'll go from there. So the three relays that control the cooling fans are in the auxiliary relay box and these fuses are in the bust electrical center. If you go in the bust electrical center uh, none of the fuses are labeled so you need this diagram that basically breaks it down but again the relays are in this auxiliary relay center so we're going to access that, have a look. These, re these fuses are the fuses that control it. I believe this one here and this one here. But uh, let's see, in this relay box here, there are 12 and 13. So this 40 and this 40 here. And these ones you can't test with a test light without popping the cover off, but they look good. Now that auxiliary relay box is right here and I tried to remove the cover on it and in their infinite wisdom they put it underneath this rad support so you have to unbolt it from the rad support just to get the cover off. Beautiful design. Okay so the auxiliary relay center has five relays and a circuit breaker in it and I went back to look at this layout here and it says relay 4, relay 5, relay 1, 2 and 3 and I'm like wait I thought there was only three relays in this schematic. Then I realized it goes off to page 2. There are five relays to run two cooling fans. What were the engineers thinking here? They must have hired Rube Goldberg here to build this system. Why would you need five relays for two cooling fans? Crazy. Anyways, let's figure out which one of these we can start with. Looks like if we go to relay number one, we can check pin 87. For power all the time right here. And we can check this one for power all the time on pin 87. That's relay number two. And in this schematic, relay one and two are these two here. So, I'm going to get a test light, a relay jumper, do some tests. Well, I'm not liking what I'm seeing so far. There's a good chance this fuse relay center is, uh, or this relay center is full of corrosion given the vintage of the vehicle and the salt usage here in northern Ontario. Oh well. So both pins 87 on relay 1 and relay 2, which is these two down here, this one here and this one here, so those pins 87 and 87 should be hot at all times. So you can see I got the test light in pin 87 of relay 1 and I got power there, but with the test light in pin 87 of relay 2, I have no power. Um, as I said, that fuse F12 30 amp which is actually 40 in this fuse panel uh, looks good I think I'm going to have a look underneath this relay center and see if there's a wire corroded off I was trying to figure out how this worked so if it comes from F12 it goes through the 
closed contact when the relay is energized goes through this fan motor up through this one now depending on what position that relay is in I, I, I was trying to figure it out by looking at it and I thought you know this is just crazy there's a dropping resistor on this page it puts looks like it puts the fans in series or parallel or series parallel and a dropping resistor I'm just going to go with what I know. There's no power to that pin 87. Let's check out that, see if that resolves it. So there's lots of corrosion at the bottom of this relay center. Uh, that particular wire right there, that yellow lime looking wire with the black trace, that one looks suspicious, but a lot of these terminals are pretty green. They had a convenient little slot cut in there to let the salt water get in, and it's done a good job. See if we can deep pin that terminal. So I got power on that wire right up to that point, so that terminal's got to be corroded off. Yeah, that'll do it. I'm going to see if I can deep pin that terminal and just replace that. But the question is, how many of these other terminals are ready to fail right behind that one? Well, that's a main feed wire, so it's going to take the most amount of current. So you can pry this red plastic uh, secondary lockout out of this and that will allow you to gain access to the release terminals in there. Push the terminal off to the side away from the actual electrical terminal and you can deep pin it. I'm going to have a look at the other four pins on this or the other yeah, pin 87A is not used on this one, so these other three pins, I'm going to take them out, depin them, and look at them. But the terminal is, is actually corroded completely off. Um, I may end up putting a, just rewiring and putting an external relay. It's just a, a standard four pin Bosch relay, not using the 87A, so I might just rewire it. So I've got a used uh, power distribution block and I deep pinned a wire out of it and it has the same terminals so I'm going to just replace the corroded terminals I've used a battery post cleaner uh, like baking soda and water in a in a spray can where the can go so I ended up replacing the pins 87 on both both relays with uh, a piece of uh, wire with a proper terminal on it. I'm gonna pack these full of dielectric grease and put it back together and see if it works. So I wanna watch the uh, coolant temperature or cylinder head temperature. It's at 80 Celsius right now and the, the fan command. But I've gone through every data list provided by the Snap-on scan tool. Drivability, fuel, you would think it would be an accessories, but it appears that Snap-on neglected to display the status of the fans. And I'm sure it's an available data parameter. There should be low speed fan, high speed fan, emissions, continue. Let's take a look at a custom data list. Let's see if it's in here. Fuel pump, fuel pump regulator. Could be under E for cooling fan, or C for cooling fan, or F for fans. It's not in that list. So I've been through all of these lists, so I'm going to have to fire up IDS. So I got IDS running on this thing. I'm going to go into data logger and see if the Ford software provides the status of the cooling fans. The powertrain, engine. It'll be interesting to see if the Ford software allows me to command the cooling fans on. I can't see how because it's a combination of relays that they energize, de-energize to get the different fan speeds out of this thing. Gonna, I'll be honest, I'll be surprised if this thing works and that there's not other issues with this thing like failed cooling fan motors and other corroded wiring. 
All right, so here is a list. Let's see, where we find cooling fan? Too many data parameters. Cylinder head temperature. Got that. Coolant temp sensor fault. Fan mode. Fan fault. FCIL. I'm not sure what that is. Fan control. Is that fuel pump control? FP, I'm pretty sure, is fuel pump. Well, let's select those and watch this. So here's the fan status saying it's off. There's no hashtag next to it. Any data parameter on this Ford software that has a hashtag like this little X is an old box can be controlled. So if there was a hashtag next to this, then we could control it. Similar to the EVAP purge valve or the IAC, that's controllable. Simply highlight it and then click this little hashtag and click start and I can ramp the engine RPM up. Might as well run it at a little faster RPM to see if that gets it, gets it hotter quicker. It's 90 Celsius right now. And it's saying it wants the fans off. Well, it wouldn't, need, wouldn't necessarily run them unless it needed them with the AC, but the AC doesn't work on this vehicle. I gather it's empty. Well, let's see if this status changes. I'll pause this recording temporarily. So we're at 100 Celsius cylinder head temperature and the cooling fan status is off. Neither cooling fan is running. Some vehicles don't run until it hits about 108, 107, 108. So we'll keep watching. Okay, it says it wants it on at low here. Fan status says low and neither fan is running. Let's see if it will command them on at high. I think there was a dropping resistor in this system for a low speed. I still don't understand why they need five relays to control two fans. Just crazy and bizarre. So it commanded the high at about 108. And one cooling fan is running on the right side, passenger side cooling fan is running. So maybe the uh, left side cooling fan motor has failed or that dropping resistor is bad but at least it runs on high you can see it's bringing the coolant temperature cylinder head temperature down to 104 probably going to drop down to around 101 100 before it switches back to low speed it kicked it on low at 105 but now it's down to 102 i would expect it to drop to low I'm going to disconnect that low speed fan and see if there's uh, power on the connector. 
So I've got a headlight wired across that fan connector. Let's have a look here. And of course, the headlight is on. So that cooling fan motor is bad. But it does run on high. And I suspect it would run on low. I'm going to run this until it cools off again. It's got to get down to about 98. At least that's what it had to last time before it actually switched back to low. So it's still running on high with the right side cooling fan running and the left side, which doesn't work, being commanded on according to the headlight. It should switch to low at about 98 to 99 Celsius. I'm curious as to whether the uh, left cooling fan should be running on low all the time. I suspect that's the way it works. No, it's at 98 now and it hasn't switched yet. Maybe it's got to go to 97. Come on, you can do it. As soon as I stop recording, it'll switch. So the interesting thing is, it switched to low, and the headlight went dim. So I guess I gather it runs that cooling fan at a reduced speed to a drop-in resistor, which is obviously working because the headlight is dim now. So it needs a cooling fan motor as well.